Eternal youth is the first thing many of us might wish for if we stumbled onto a genie. But there's always a catch. Now, scientists have discovered a version of this story playing out in ant nests, as parasites drastically extend the lifespan of worker ants, but at a terrible cost. Researchers from the Johannes Gutenberg University in Mainz studied T. nylandari ants that were infected with A. brevis tapeworms and found that the infected ants lived longer. They found that's because the tapeworms release chemicals that keep their victims young. Even at an advanced age, the infected ants still retain their youthful bodies. Young ants start off a yellow color, usually turning brown as they age, and their skin hardens, but infected ants stayed yellow. The infected ants were also very lazy, never leaving the nest or helping with any of the usual tasks. The tapeworm chemicals also seemed to change the behavior of the ants around them, as these uninfected ants would serve them as if they were queens. Researchers think the tapeworms release the magical chemical in their hosts because it makes them too slow to move away when birds break open the ant nest to hunt ants. In this way, the tapeworms get swallowed with their hosts, which leads to the worms' eggs getting spread over large areas when the birds defecate. On closer inspection, the team found some metabolic changes in infected ants that drive this biology and behavior. When worker ants are promoted to become queens, certain genes switch on that boost their lifespan, and the worms also seem to be able to turn these genes on in their hosts. Infected ants also give off unique chemical signals that drive the other ants to want to look after them. In what reads like a concept for a horror film, scientists have discovered a new species of parasitic fungus that turns flies into tweaking, parasite-spreading zombies. Here is what they found. Two new species of fungi have been discovered in Denmark that turn flies into zombies and eat them from inside out, while the flies shoot out fungus spores like rockets. The new species, Strongwell C. tigrinae and Strongwell C. acerosa, infect two types of Danish fly, Coenotia tigrina and Coenotia testacea, according to research published in the Journal of Invertebrate Pathology. Spores from the fungus stick to the fly's cuticle and make their way into the abdomen, where they bore large holes from which thousands of torpedo-shaped spores burst to infect other flies. The fly goes on to live for several days while the fungus devours its genitals, fat reserves, reproductive organs, and lastly, its muscle. During this time, the fly continues to interact with and spread spores to other victims, although researchers say the fungus only infects between 3% and 5% of flies in a healthy population. Researchers from the Natural History Museum of Denmark and the University of Copenhagen's Department of Plant and Environmental Sciences suspect the two fungi may produce substances like amphetamines. These chemicals keep their hosts alive and energized until there is nothing left in its abdomen but fungus. Why is this disgusting new discovery important? Researchers believe the amphetamine-like chemicals that keep the flies invigorated also keep other microorganisms away from the flies' wounds, and this could lead to health benefits for humans. Speaking to The Guardian, University of Copenhagen ecologist Jürgen Eilenberg said, We would definitely like to continue our research, as doing so has the potential to discover and later make use of these substances, perhaps in medicine. Scientists have identified a fungal pathogen that hijacks hapless fruit flies and puppeteers them to their death. New UC Berkeley research has found that when the Entomophthora musca fungus infects fruit flies, it infiltrates the nervous system early on. The insect is relatively unaffected while the fungus feeds off its fat stores but begins acting abnormally once the pathogen invades and destroys its organs. Eventually, the fly is forced to climb to an elevated spot where the fungus grows out of its proboscis and sticks the insect to whatever surface it's on, cementing it in place. The fly is made to raise its wings to a 90-degree angle before dying, allowing new spores to be ejected from its exposed abdomen to infect new hosts. The existence of the fungus, whose scientific name means destroyer of insects, has been known for over a hundred years. Similar pathogens exist that hijack ants and aphids, but scientists have yet to figure out exactly how. The Berkeley researchers are especially curious about how the puppet master fungus gets the fly to override survival instincts and climb to its death and are now focusing their efforts to uncover the answer. Researchers have discovered a Godzilla wasp that deliberately dives underwater to insert parasitic eggs into its prey. Here is what they found. Only a few species of wasps enter water, but a previously unknown species has been discovered in Japan that not only enters water, but dives underwater to search for and attack its prey. The parasitoid wasp was dubbed Microgaster Godzilla because of the Godzilla-like way in which it emerges from the water. It is native to Japan and has evolved enlarged and strongly curved tarsal claws. These are thought to be an adaptation used to grip to the substrate as it enters the water to look for its victim. 
According to a research article published in the peer-reviewed scientific journal of Hymenoptera Research, the female wasp searches for its host, larvae of the moth species Elophila turbata, by walking over floating plants. Elophila turbata larvae make portable cases from fragments of aquatic plants. They live inside these cases near the surface of the water. Once the wasp finds its host, it probes it with its antenna and eventually forces it out of its case. Sometimes it has to dive completely underwater to evict the caterpillar. Microgaster Godzilla then paralyzes the larva with its ovipositor and inserts its eggs into the caterpillar's flesh. The wasp's parasitic larvae later consume the caterpillar from the inside until they pupate. You're probably wondering whether Mothra comes in. Lead author Jose Fernandez Triana of the Canadian National Collection of Insects elaborated in the journal article. The reasons why we decided to use the name of Godzilla for the wasp species are interesting. First, being a Japanese species, it respectfully honors Godzilla, a fictional monster, kaiju, that became an icon after the 1954 Japanese film of the same name and many remakes afterwards. It has become one of the most recognizable symbols of Japanese popular culture worldwide. Second, the wasp's parasitization behavior bears some loose resemblance to the kaiju character in the sense that the wasp suddenly emerges from the water to parasitize the host, similar to how Godzilla suddenly emerges from the water in the movies. Third, Godzilla has sometimes been associated, albeit in different ways, with Mothra, another kaiju that is typically portrayed as a larva, caterpillar, or an adult moth. As you can see, we had biological, behavioral, and cultural reasons to justify our choice of a name. Of course, that and having a bit of fun, because that is also an important part of life and science. What sounds like the absolute worst idea you could ever come up with? Getting a large face tattoo the day before the interview for your dream job? Replying to all of your spam emails with the phrase, Yes, please, that sounds great. How about deliberately releasing a plague of mosquitoes down in Florida? We don't know about the first two, but the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has given the go-ahead for the mosquitoes. Here's what they're thinking. Biotech company Oxitec will this week begin controversially releasing half a billion gene-hacked mosquitoes along the Florida Keys in an experiment designed to kill off the island's pest population, according to Futurism. The experiment will target the mosquito species Aedes aegypti, which makes up between 2% and 4% of the mosquito population in the area but is associated with almost all cases of mosquito-borne illnesses, such as dengue and Zika. According to a statement released on the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's website, scientists have inserted a gene called OX5034 exclusively into male mosquitoes, which don't bite humans. They say the males will breed with wild females, which do. The OX5034 gene kills off female Aedes aegypti mosquitoes before they enter adulthood and therefore steadily reduces the overall population. The move comes as mosquitoes native to Florida are increasingly resistant to existing insecticide controls, according to Undark. However, the experiment has caused controversy across the Florida Keys area, with Futurism reporting many residents concerned with a lack of transparency. Potential issues with the experiment are numerous. In a previous trial in Brazil, Oxitec acknowledged that some second-generation female mosquitoes with a similar gene, OX513A, had survived into adulthood, leading to suggestions that a new genetic hybrid could survive in the wild. Futurism also points out that there were no caged trials before the actual release of the mosquitoes, leading to accusations from environmental group Friends of the Earth that not enough evidence is in place before the start of the Florida trial. Scientists in India have discovered a new species of tardigrade that protects itself from extreme doses of UV radiation with a blue glowing protective shield. Here is what they found. Tardigrades, also known as water bears, are among the most resilient animals in the world and are considered by many to be the cutest invertebrates. They are nearly translucent and average about half a millimeter in length. They lumber around on eight stubby legs located under their bodies. Studies show they can use a unique form of hibernation to cope with temperatures from as cold as absolute zero to above boiling, live at pressures six times greater than those at the bottom of the deepest ocean, and withstand dehydration for a decade. They can survive extreme radiation and live in space. Now, researchers in India have found that at least one species of tardigrade has another trick up its sleeve. Writing in the journal Biology Letters, scientists at the Indian Institute of Science describe how they discovered a new species of tardigrade on a moss-covered concrete wall at the institute. The scientists found that when they exposed this species called Paramacrobiotis BLR strain and other species H. exemplaris to 15 minutes of germicidal levels of UV exposure, Paramacrobiotis survived. 
H. exemplaris did not. When treated with a dose four times as strong, 60% went on to live for 30 more days. In fact, the reddish-brown species glowed bright blue. The scientists found that it did this by using a protective fluorescent shield that absorbs the damaging ultraviolet radiation and emits it back out as harmless blue light. The researchers then created an extract from the new species and covered the UV-sensitive tardigrades, H. exemplaris, and the fluorescent substance. This gave them a level of protection from UV radiation, with around half the H. exemplaris tardigrades still alive after a few days of exposure to a dose that should have been lethal. In their paper, the team from the Indian Institute of Science explained the new species has probably evolved this fluorescence mechanism to counter the high ultraviolet radiation of tropical southern India, where the UV index can reach up to 10. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.